In the previous few videos, I introduced you to frictional forces. We learned in particular that a kinetic friction force acts when there is a sliding motion between two objects with surfaces in contact. The strength of the kinetic friction force is equal to something called the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the strength of the normal force acting between the two surfaces. Now we're going to do an example problem in which a kinetic friction force appears. In this example, we have a mass which is being dragged up an incline by a string held parallel to the incline. There is kinetic friction acting between the mass and the incline, and we would like to know how much tension must be, must be maintained in the string in order for the mass to move up the incline at a constant speed. So we're going to solve this problem using the first condition of equilibrium, and we're going to follow this handout that hopefully you're familiar with from a couple of the previous videos. Okay, so the first step is to draw a sketch of the problem. So over here, we have a sketch of the problem. Moving on to the second step, we select an object from our sketch and draw a dashed line around the object. So I'm going to pick that mass, which is sliding up the incline, and draw a dashed line around it. Okay, to B, draw the gravitational force acting on the object. So I'm going to go into the figure here and draw in the gravitational force vector, which is acting on the object. And as I do that, I'm also going to start a picture off to the side because I don't want the original figure to get too cluttered. I should emphasize that there's going to be a lot of problems in this class where you have things moving on inclines. And students will often tend to take that figure and rotate it so that the object seems to be moving horizontally and then gravity is pointing off to the side at some weird angle. So please don't do that. If you do choose to make a clean figure off to the side, please keep that second figure in the same orientation as the original figure because it can be very confusing to look at these additional figures where everything is pointing into weird directions. Okay, so anyway, having started that second figure, I'm going to put in the uh, gravitational force. Okay, so now I'm going to return to the handout. It says step to C, go around the dotted line and note any locations where we see things reaching in through the dashed line to exert forces on the object. Okay, so coming to the dashed line here, uh, down here, I see the dashed line cutting through the surface. So we asked ourselves, what forces might that inclined surface be exerting on the mass? So first, we would have the normal force. So we are familiar with the normal force from the previous examples. So I'm going to put in the normal force. Now in this problem, the inclined surface will also be exerting a kinetic friction force on the mass. Since the mass is being pulled up the incline, the kinetic friction force is going to oppose that sliding motion by pointing down the incline. So I'm gonna to come to my side figure here and put in a kinetic friction force pointing down the incline. All right, now I can go back to the figure and see if there are any other things reaching in through the dashed line to exert forces on the mass. And here you can see that string reaching in through the dashed line to exert a force on the mass, which in this case would be a tension force. So I'm gonna to go to my figure here and put in the tension force pointing up the incline. Okay, so let's go back to the handout. Now we have reached step 2D, which says label each vector. 
and I like to double label my vectors, you can see that I have already labeled each vector with a vector symbol, gravitational force vector, tension force vector, et cetera. But now I'm gonna go back into the figure and put in additional labels indicating the magnitudes of those forces. So the magnitude of the gravitational force will be the mass times the free fall acceleration. Then for the tension force, I'll just put T, the tension in the string, magnitude of the normal force N, and then the magnitude of the kinetic friction force would be, as we see in this formula here, the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the magnitude of the normal force. Okay, so moving on to step three, it says introduce a Cartesian coordinate system. All right, so that means we want to put in X and Y axes. And remember that we can actually rotate our X and Y axes. And the idea is to orient the X and Y axes so that as many vectors as possible line up with one axis or the other. Now, if you look at what the force vectors are doing here, notice that if I orient my X and Y axes like so, with the X axis pointing along the incline and the Y axis pointing perpendicular to the incline, then three of the four force vectors line up with an axis. The only one which doesn't is the gravitational force. So I'm gonna go into the figure and put in X and Y axes, uh, Y axis perpendicular to the incline, and then X axis parallel to the incline. Okay, now, Moving to step 3b, it says if a vector is not aligned with either axis, then determine the angle the vector makes with one of the two axes and indicate this angle on your sketch. Okay, so the only vector which is not aligned with an axis is the gravitational force vector. So we would like to figure out what angle does the gravitational force vector make with the minus y axis. In order to do that, I'm going to go back to the original figure. And into the original figure, I'm going to introduce some x and y axes. So y axis, perpendicular to the incline. I don't really need an x axis, but I'll put that in anyways. All right, so we want to find this angle here between the gravitational force vector and the minus y direction. So what we're gonna do here is make use of two right triangles. Now, the first right triangle I want you to look at is this one here. This here is a right triangle because right here, the y-axis is perpendicular to the incline. So that gives us a little right angle right in there. Okay, so this being a right triangle, the two small angles of the right triangle here and here have to add up to 90 degrees. So if this is theta, what plus theta gives you 90? So the thing that you add to theta to get 90 degrees would be 90 degrees minus theta. So this angle right in here, that would be 90 degrees minus theta. Okay, now we're going to look at a second right triangle. So our second right triangle is this one here. This is a right triangle because that extension of the gravitational force meets the horizontal at a right angle. Okay, so here we have here and here, we have the two small angles of a right triangle. This angle is 90 minus theta. So what do we add to 90 minus theta to get 90? We add theta. So this angle right in here, this angle right in here, that must again be theta, okay? So what we have found here is that the angle between the gravitational force vector and the minus y direction is theta, the same theta as the angle between the incline and the horizontal. So now I can go into my force diagram here and just pop in that angle theta just like that. All right, so let's continue with the handout. So step four is we're going to develop a grid 
into which we put the x and y components of the force vectors. So this is similar to the previous examples. I'm going to start by just listing the force vectors along the top of my table. So I have gravitational force, tension force, normal force, kinetic friction force, and then for each of these, we want x and y components. So this picture is starting to get a little cluttered. So I think I'm going to give the gravitational force vector its own figure so that we can see the X and Y components of the gravitational force vector a little easier. Okay, so I'm gonna copy my X and Y axes over here. Remember, always keep those axes in the same orientation as the original figure. Okay, so there's our gravitational force vector. Magnitude mg, angle theta. And let's project that gravitational force vector onto the axes. All right, so you have here the y component of the gravitational force. And then here, the x component of the gravitational force. And if this is the x component of the gravitational force, then let's say that is also equivalent to the x component of the gravitational force. OK, so let's use our standard process for working out the components. So for each component of a force, we can put plus or minus, followed by the magnitude, followed by a sine or cosine. So if I look at the x component of the gravitational force, you can see that that lines up along the minus x axis. So I put in a minus sign. Then I put in the magnitude, mg. Now I want to put in a sine or a cosine. But if this is my x component of the gravitational force here, you can see that this is opposite to the theta. So I'm going to put in a sine theta. Okay, so now for the y component, I put minus because it's along the minus y direction. Then the magnitude, mg. And then because that gy is adjacent to the theta, I'm going to put cosine theta. Now, the remaining three vectors are each lined up along one of the axes. So for each of those other three vectors, there's going to be one component, which is zero and one component which is either plus or minus the magnitude. And if you like, you can pause the video here and fill out the rest on your own before proceeding with the video. Okay, tension points along the plus x direction, so it has no y component. And because it's pointing along the plus x direction, the x component is the magnitude. Normal force has no x component. It's pointing exactly along the plus y direction. So the y component is the magnitude. The kinetic friction force is pointing entirely along the minus x direction. So there is no y component. And then the x component is minus the magnitude. Okay. All right, so with that, let's wrap things up. We can go to the step on the handout. Oops. We can go to the step on the handout, which says plug the results from our grid into the first condition of equilibrium, which is to say that the x components of the forces will sum to zero, and the y components of the forces will sum to zero. Okay, so we sum the x components of the forces to zero by 
reading along the top row. That gives us minus mg sine theta plus tension minus mu k n equals zero. Then we sum the y components to zero by reading along the bottom row. And we then have minus mg cosine theta plus n equals zero. All right, so now let's go into the algebra. We are trying to solve for the tension. That's one of the unknowns. Now look at the two equations here and see if we can figure out what the remaining unknowns are. Can you see that the only unknown in these two equations other than the tension is the normal force? Okay, uh, let's number the equations as well. Equation one, equation two. Now, in order to solve equation one for the tension, we first need the normal force, but notice that you can solve equation two for the normal force directly. Before we go into the algebra here, I want to remind you that we always want to work symbolically until we get to the very last step. In other words, what we want to do here is solve for the tension in terms of symbols. And once we have solved for the tension in terms of symbols, then we can put in numerical values along with the correct units to get a numerical value for tension with correct units. Okay, so we'll start by solving equation two for the normal force. So equation two, solving for the normal force, just take minus mg cosine theta, put it on the right, where it picks up a plus sign. So that gives us n equals mg cosine theta. I can call that equation three. So now I'm going to substitute equation three into equation one. So that normal force will just be substituted like so. So now we do three into one. That will give us minus mg sine theta plus tension minus mu k mg cosine theta equals zero. Okay, now we can finish the problem. Just take this term here and this term here, move both of those terms over to the right where they pick up plus signs, and we then have tension equals mg sine theta plus mu k mg cosine theta. Now, before substituting, I want to simplify by pulling out mg. So I have tension equals mg and then times sine theta plus mu k cosine theta. Now let's make the substitutions. The mass is 20 kilograms. Little g is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so I'll put this factor on the next line. So I have sine of 35 degrees. My coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.4. And then I have cosine of 35 degrees. When I put this into my calculator, I get 177 newtons. Okay, so now we have solved our first example problem using the kinetic friction. 